let me tell you about a game called Psychonauts. It came out in 2005 and it is a cult classic, which means it's really good, but also that nobody actually bought it. And that means there will be plenty of people watching this video who have no idea why this game is held up in such high regard. And that is what I, Internet Video Man, am here to explain. But first, some background. Psychonauts was the first game by Double Fine Productions, a studio formed by Tim Schafer and a few of his friends from LucasArts, which is where he made point-and-click adventures like Grim Fandango, Day of the Tentacle, and Full Throttle. And in that last one, Schaefer wanted to have a section where biker hero Ben would take peyote and go on a psychedelic vision quest inside his own mind. But Lucas wasn't really into the whole hallucinogenic thing, and the vision quest got scrapped. Until a decade or so later, when that idea got reworked for Psychonauts. In this game, circus runaway Raz has the power to enter other people's minds and bounce around in their subconscious. But this isn't a point-and-click adventure, though it does have some item puzzles. Instead, it's a 3D collectathon platformer like Banjo-Kazooie. Though where games of that nature generally had pretty random world themes, in Psychonauts, because every level is set inside someone's noggin, each world gives the player a unique insight into that character's personality. The mind of grizzled war veteran Coach Oleander, for example, is a constant battlefield, while extrovert Mia Vordello has a lively party playing in her head, and the brain of stoic psychonaut Sasha Nine is a well-organised monochromatic cube. Dig a bit deeper though, and you'll find repressed memories and emotional baggage lurking beneath the surface. A hidden memory vault reveals that Oleander never actually made it into the army, Mia keeps nightmares locked away in a secret room, and Sasha's tightly packed mind explodes out into vignettes from his troubled past. Raz, what have you done? This is not control, this is chaos! Those three brains are just the tutorials though, teaching you how to jump, shoot, and levitate. As you leave the camp, enter the mental asylum across the lake, and start exploring minds that are, let's say, unmoored from reality, things start getting really good. A fan favourite level is The Milkman Conspiracy. This level takes place in the twisted mind of Boyd Cooper. And I mean twisted. His brain space is a cosy suburbia that has been bent and skewed, tied in knots and folded over on itself. Boyd is also wrapped by paranoia, and so his level is filled with cameras, prying eyes, and government agents in trench coats who are poorly hiding as housewives, plumbers, and grieving widows. The dead people are underground, and I have brought flowers because I am sad. Because Boyd feels like he is being watched, Be careful! They're watching? All the time! The actual gameplay of the level has you obsessing over how other characters see you. You need to find disguises to infiltrate the agent's groups, and you can use the level's new power-up, Clairvoyance, to see how other characters perceive you. Also, where Mia's nightmares are locked away, Boyd's roam free and take you on in a scrappy boss fight. And while other stages feature sensors who block out unhealthy thoughts, Boyd's level is missing these enemies, showing just how far his mind has gone. Both the disorientating design of the level and the perception-based gameplay we perform reveal that Boyd's mind has been twisted by delusions of persecution and paranoid conspiracy theories, and so, while Boyd is just a gibbering mess in the real world, we get to understand how he truly feels by playing his level. The Milkman Conspiracy is certainly the best level in Psychonauts, but other stages offer similar treasures. In Black Velvetopia, we explore the mind of tortured artist Edgar Tegley, and Raz must contend with a rampaging bull, a manifestation of Tegley's rage who charges down narrow streets. If Raz gets hit, he's pushed back earlier into the level, perhaps showing Edgar's unending battle with this part of his psyche. To really understand this level, you need to get these mental vaults. Now, each level in Psychonauts features collectibles, like loads of collectibles, probably too many collectibles, including figments of imagination, emotional baggage, and mental cobwebs. But the vaults are the key, as each one reveals more about the characters on screen. 
Tegley's vault shows us that this guy's girlfriend was pinched by a football player. Heartbroken, Tegley ends up losing his next wrestling match. With the vault in mind, we can understand why Raz must fight four wrestlers. They represent Tegley's bitter teammates. And we can see how Edgar has buried his high school memories beneath a delusional bullfighting drama by literally burying bits of a high school in the sewers deep beneath a black velvet city. Raz must also use art to help overcome Tegley's troubles by using paintings as doorways and magic props, which reflects Edgar's actions back out in the real world. And let me show you just one more level, Gloria's theatre. Gloria von Guten is a fallen actress who suffers from severe mood swings caused by bipolar disorder. The level, of course, takes place in a theatre with a play that recreates the story of her troubled upbringing. Your mom has a career and a boyfriend to think about. She doesn't have time for an ugly little girl like you. To match the bipolar disorder, Raz can whack a switch to change the mood from happy to sad and back again, which changes the mood of the play and can make enemies appear on the stage. To finish the level, Raz must use both sides of Gloria's personality to finish a puzzle based around the play and its set, so he can get up in the rafters, beat up Gloria's inner critic, and, uh, cure her. Yes, in each of these mental asylum levels, the end goal is to fix that character's disorders so Raz can bypass them. And yes, Psychonauts does run the risk at times of representing mental illness in too simple terms with stereotypes and easy cures. But it's notable that it doesn't turn these characters into villains or even jokes. Psychonauts is a rarity in that it's a genuinely funny video game, but these asylum patients are rarely the punchline. In fact, the game allows us to empathise with these people by letting us see what it's like to be inside their head. And I think that's what makes Psychonauts special. It uses level design in such a way that what the level looks like and what you end up doing in that level says so much about the character in question. And it's more interesting, I think, than just getting these stories through a cutscene or a dialogue tree. Instead, you need to think about what each element represents and how it ties into the secret clues you found scattered throughout the level. You're doing archaeology and psychotherapy and English lit, all while punching a giant fish in the face. The point is, level design can tell a story, and you don't have to go inside someone's brain to see this. As I talked about in my episode on Fort Frolic, Bioshock explored the character of Sander Cohen, a much less successful portrait of mental illness, I should note, through the design of the level and the tasks that you're asked to perform, specifically photography and dance. Loads of great games are packed with this sort of narrative, with environmental storytelling and mechanics that double up as metaphors, so I'll definitely be exploring more of this stuff in the future. For Psychonauts, though, it might not be the world's greatest platformer or puzzle game, but the way it weaves level design and characterization together so you can better understand the game's troubled cast of characters simply by playing the game is perhaps the main reason why it deserves its cult classic status. They may come for me, Dogen, but they'll be looking for Raz, the boy. What they're going to find, what they don't expect, is Raz. The Psychonaut. And, and, and then you'll make their heads explode? No. Do you do that? No. Well, once kinda. Hey there, Game Makers Toolkit is funded over on the crowdfunding website Patreon. These are my ultra special top tier supporters. Psychonauts was actually the first game we played as part of our new game club, which is where patrons and I vote for a game, play it, and then chat about the game's design. Thanks to everyone who joined in and gave their thoughts, and definitely helped me sound more smart in this episode than I actually am. More smart? Smarter? See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs>